Good morning. It is Friday, which is my favorite, and today we're going to start a brand new project. It is a colored and stamped patio with a fire pit, a sidewalk, and a shed slab. It's been a long week. I am drained physically and emotionally, so I've decided that today we're only going to work about half a day. I'm going to take this trash out, grab some coffee. Let's get to work. How much garbage do we make? Morning, Scott. Good morning. How's the coffee business? Good. It's Friday, my favorite. Good? Yep. Good. How are you today? Great, how are you? Thank you. See you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, it is 6.15. I'm just pulling into the yard. Daryl's here. Actually, I think Francisco's here, too. Two guys beat me. Morning. Good morning. I need a pick. A pick for what? See if I can get my SIM card out or a paper clip. I have picks in the shed. Yeah. All that rain stays down south. I know, it's just barely supposed to come up here and just miss us to the south. You can see how dark it is to the south. I know. It's raining right there. And not here. Hola! Why well, you look so tired? I know yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. I love it. No? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know about that thing. It just didn't seem to have enough vibration to make it easy. Like the gas powered one, it has way more than enough. Oh, yeah. I mean, you only run it at like half throttle. That thing I had floored all the way and it still really wasn't vibrating quite enough. You think this pan's too big? Yeah. I think a 12 foot pan would be maximum. I don't know. I'm going to try it again. I'm not giving up on it, but I wasn't super overly impressed yesterday. There's things I like about it, and there's one big thing I wasn't impressed with. Just make sure you put that pick back. Yep. What are we doing today? I uh, was setting up a stem patio, sidewalk, a lot of hand digging, um, and a shed slab. Make sure the truck's clean, the garbage can's empty. Uh, we gotta get that compactor get off the there. truck. Go over to the gas station on Lily and Silver Spring. How much is in that dump truck now? Oh, I know, but that thing has such a small tank. I bet it's down farther than you think. If you ever come to fuel next time, you grab that side. Oh. See, it's got a big hose. Yeah. That's the high flow pump. It fills it really, really fast. Oh, my Sorry. Just trying to make them hours, huh? People that don't have these. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I gotta pay inside, I guess. The pump's not working. What do I need to do to get diesel? It won't even take a card out there. Uh, I can turn it on for you and then you can come in. You can okay. Or turn it on if you could turn both sides on, we're on both yeah, sides. Yeah, so when you lift them up, I'll turn them both on. You them thank you, thank you. You see the price of diesel? Yeah. Oh, it's four ninety nine here. It's cheaper than across the street. Way cheaper. It's five dollars and eighteen cents across the street at Quick Trip. I wonder why there's such a difference. This one, this we can, one. we came to the right one today. Yeah. That's gross. He's not even looking at his phone. Huh? No. He's so tired. He's why are you that tired? You really didn't even do much yesterday. <laughs> and Junie's still cause you. Topsoil wore you out. Daryl! He's gonna pull up! Let's just top it off! Dude, I gotta get Daryl off his phone. Daryl's on his phone constantly. Constantly! He's on his phone more than me. And I have good reasons to be on my phone. All right, we're here in the job. It's uh, five to seven right now. I did some work here in the past. We did a uh, shed slab. Shouldn't call it a shed slab, a shop slab. And we pumped it. Eric is like the walking dead today. He's in zombie mode. 
Oh, wow. This is so muddy. <laughs> I don't think we can work here. Man, I don't think we can work here today. This is a swamp. Right where the shed's supposed to go is a big standing pool of water. Hang on, I'm gonna tell him not to unload that. This is just gonna make a gi giant mess, Wally. Oh, is that disappointing. Hey! Dale! Yeah. Don't unload that! Right. It's a swamp back here, I don't even think we could do it. It's had two full dry days. I mean, there's standing water and everything. Like the patio's supposed to go right here. Look at this. And then there's a, see that puddle right there? That's where a shed slab is going. If we come in here, it's gonna tear it up, leave mud everywhere. It's gonna be a disaster. You remember this one, right? This is the one we poured with that big boom pump. You weren't here. No. It was just me, you, Bugs. Bugs. We had somebody else. Uh, yeah. It wasn't Al. Al here? Damn, no, I don't think Al. Al was here. You actually use the intro for the stuff? I got pictures still. I'll yeah, show a picture. Yeah, the shed slab like goes right right here where that pile of dirt is and we have to come through here with the skid steer to get it no, the skid steer. no dude we can't work here we can't do anything here all right then all right. yep see you later oh man right in my heart oh. i don't know what to do I don't know what to do. We could do uh we could do some landscape at my house. You got dirt left. We could soil the edges of my driveways, seed that. We can mow the grass. That needs to be done. Alright, well let's just do let's just do that. I mean I want to get you guys some hours at least. Hey, we're gonna go to my house and uh, fix the edges of the driveway where it's just dirt where the grass is gone because okay. he's got that topsoil I'm gonna okay. go grab some seed that the seed and stuff that we just took off the truck yeah. I'm gonna go put it back on my truck We'll seed it and right. then we'll probably do some mulch. We're gonna mow the grass. Whatever you want to do, Ray. Trim it up All right, well, I did not expect that at all. It's been dry the last two days and things are relatively dry around here been drying up and I thought for sure it would be fine over there, but it definitely wasn't. And it was best just to leave there. If we would have started digging in there, uh, it would have been a disaster. The problem is I got concrete ordered for next week for that job, and I didn't really have another job planned until next Tuesday. Um, so I'm going to have to scramble and make some phone calls so we can start a new job on Monday. So we're going to run to my house start cleaning up my house i really want to get the guys some hours i'm not just gonna turn them around and send them back home after waking up early so we'll see what we can get done and i'm sure i'll probably think of something else all right i'm back in my house friendly bankers is here to help gonna get these guys started i got something else for marcel to do and then i have some other stuff i need to do as well Get easy on the topsoil because they're almost out. We still got to do this whole side. Do you got some work boots? Zo's ain't gonna cut it. These are work boots. Oh. Where's your work boots? Yeah, I told you that already. Yeah.
once you get all the seed and the mulch in the soil, you take the broom and you just drag it across the surface. And what that does is it, you know, it gets some of the seed down in the soil. So it's not just laying on the top. Bye, Daniel. Have a good day. Bye. Oh, Don't put seed until you grade. It hasn't even been raked yet. No. He's putting seed and he ain't even raked it flat yet. You're not a landscaper, are you? Wow. You think we should go back into landscaping? I can. Oh, I could get contracts. Easy. You guys will be mowing at night. No, I don't want to do that anymore. No, I really don't want to do that. All right, this weed whacker hasn't run since last fall. Let's see if we can get it going. Third pull popped. I mean, the sidewalk is still perfect. It is. It is. It didn't crack or anything. Yep. This sidewalk is quite famous. It is. I'm going to feel bad ever taking it out. Why do you take it out? <laughs> well, I'm either going to do an addition back here this year or a really, really nice custom patio. You should do a nice custom patio. I really should do an addition, but additions are very expensive. So I'm not a skilled carpenter either, so I would have to hire somebody to do all the carpentry. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would do the foundation and the footings and all that stuff they just have to come and build on it but even that it's a lot of money oh yeah just have her call me for the credit card you guys could get a i don't know a yard yard and a half of malt two yards of mulch maybe and then remulch all back here around that thing here and in the front you get to pluck the weeds brown chocolate brown the grass has got to get mowed and trimmed 100 percent pick up all the sticks and just throw the sticks in the woods and mow everything nice straight stripes probably have to be careful right here yeah right here don't come into this area at all you'll get stuck and wreck my yard and just come here with the weed whacker and just get this little area here and just do not put the mower in this area because i remember the last time i had you mow and what happened daryl took the mower in the mud tore up the lawn oh come on <laughs> yeah i do uh i'm taking marcel and the white truck with me okay. so it's just you and those two guys i'm gonna have him go acid wash stuff and okay. there's some other errands all right uh meet me back at the yard we gotta grab stuff to acid wash all right at the yard i gotta get stuff for washing a stamp patio and some stamp borders we'll get some acid a push broom and the pressure washer and hopefully a hose if i can find one acid sprinkling can pressure washer yeah just throw the strap on there so it doesn't all right, so me and Marcel are back at this job we poured last week. Poured a stamp patio on a driveway, and we're here to wash the patio. What's all that? It's just water? Be sure, it looks dark. That's rust, dude. That's rust, we gotta get that off. That's bad. That's real bad. Is a spigot on? What? Is a spigot on? Oh man. I don't think her spigot's on. And Marcel just got rust water all the way down the driveway. Ooh.
hook up those two hoses to this. If we got to buy more hoses, we got to buy them because that's going to be a problem for sure. I got all these splits on my fingers. I'm dying. I might cave and wear gloves next week. All right, well, the rust water came off the driveway, thankfully. Marcel's just finishing up, and we're gonna start washing this patio. We poured this patio about a week ago. It's ready for washing and sealing. We do a two-step process when we wash it. I'll show you what we do here in just a minute. All right, we finally got water hooked up. I'm gonna see if this engine will start now. It's a Honda, so I have confidence. Oops, making everybody mad today. I'm making everybody mad today, I'm telling you what. I can't do anything right today. Sorry about that, bud, I apologize. Oh, is it Monday or what? I even got my favorite people mad, the garbage man. <laughs> What's his name? Joe Havel? Yeah. All right. Is this thing on? I don't know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> What's up, Joe Havel? <laughs> There's a shout out. There you go. All right. So that's the plan. We'll get it washed. And we'll, I'll come back tomorrow and seal. It's supposed to be a nice day. Okay. And then you're done. So okay. I'll just, I'll email you that last little invoice or whatever. Yes. I blocked the garbage, man. He was mad. What's up? I blocked the garbage, man, with my truck. He wasn't real happy. Not really. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pressure wash the patio. This is a 2,500 PSI pressure washer, I believe. And we're using the green tip, the 25 degree fan tip. You don't get right up on the surface, you hold it back. I'll just show you how we do it. You did? That's perfect. So when we're washing this, we're gonna get any residual release of dirt off the house at the same time. All right, so as you just saw, I pressure washed the entire patio, not getting real, real close to the surface. Just taking the glaze off with the pressure washer. Got the house all nice and clean, like it should be. So the next step is we're gonna mix up some muriatic acid and water, and we'll sprinkle that over the surface. We'll scrub it with a push broom, and then we'll rinse it back off. We're gonna look for dark spots, and we're gonna use that solution to remove those dark spots and get everything even. So when you mix muriatic acid and water to wash stamped concrete, you gotta be really careful you don't put too much acid in the mix or you can take all the release off and then you have a lot of repair work. So you need to be careful. You wanna start out with just a little bit of acid, mix it up and see what it does to the surface, what the reaction's gonna be like, and then you can always add more later. So I'll start out with maybe, I'll just show you. I don't really measure. Acid hurts when it gets in those cuts. I can tell you that right now. Whoo! I got acid in all the cuts in my fingers. Ow! That, that hurts when you got open cuts like that. And then you get acid, straight acid right in there. So there's probably a uh, 
there's probably a quarter of an inch of acid down there. That's it. Very, very little. So I'll go ahead and fill this all the way up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of this solution on the surface and watch for the reaction. You can see how the acid reacts with the concrete. This is going to be pretty light. So there's very little reaction there you can't even really notice. So I'm going to put a little bit more acid in there. You always start with too little and work your way up. Alright, that looks about perfect, but I don't think you guys are able to see that. I'm going to grab my other camera and get a close-up. Alright, I'm going to show you what the reaction should look like to start. You should see a little bit of fizzing on the surface, and you should be able to hear it. See that little bit of fizzing? And you can hear that noise. That's exactly what you're looking for. If it's really sizzling and making a lot of noise, you have too much acid in there, you need to add more water. It should just be a very, very slight reaction. You can try it out on an area and then come back with a little bit more solution if need be, but never, never put too much acid on the surface of the concrete. Because like I said, you'll burn the release right off and then you only have one color. <laughs> then your customer's not gonna be real happy with you. So when you put this acid on the surface, you want the surface to be wet. So you wet the surface. You don't need it soaked in puddles everywhere, but you need it damp at least. Then you're going to go ahead and use your sprinkling can and sprinkle the entire surface of the concrete and make sure it lands everywhere. Nice and even. One section at a time because you can't have it dry up on you as you're doing it. Then you're immediately going to come with a push broom and you're going to scrub it, the whole entire thing, lightly. Now what you're doing by scrubbing this is you're looking for the areas that have more release than other areas and you're scrubbing those areas harder. You're really trying to even out the color so the patio looks very uniform. Also, the acid helps open up the surface of the concrete just a little bit and it helps it to accept the sealer. As soon as you're done scrubbing it, you come back with your garden hose and you rinse the entire surface. And now what we'll do is we'll work away across the entire slab and then we just let it dry for a day and then we'll come back tomorrow and apply sealer. What do you, what's up? Uh, you want some bark bolts down here? We got a little bit left. Why do you look so handsome? Your wife went here. She wanted that gone. Yeah, she wanted that gone. Whatever my wife says, you do it. Just trust me on that one. I have a lot of experience. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm going to run to the bank. You remember where that is? Yeah. County Line Road. Near Appleton. Hello. Wow, you still look your really. Still you still look really handsome. Your your wife left and she's at the garage door. Uh. Second question: What do you want me to do with these wires here? What wires? These ones. That ain't mine. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they went to your pole. They went to my pole? Yeah. They came across the street here, and they went to that pole up there. Daryl, did you rip my wires down? <laughs> Eric did. It's, not, it's not funny, dude. Yeah, it's, a, it's not electric wires. It's only two cable wires. It's easy. It's an easy fix. So, yeah, it's not an easy fix, Daryl. <sighs> yes, it is. Who's going to fix it? Who's going to pay for it? We could pay for it. Daryl, that's my internet, dude. No, your internet's hooked up. This is your neighbor's over here. Oh, that's even better. It's these two houses. There's only two lines. Yours goes all You know what? You know what, dude? I'm frustrated right now. I gotta go. All right. It's hard to even describe my level of frustration right now.
just with all the things that's happened today and then Daryl just topped it off with the big one. So Daryl tore all the wires down except for the power line, thankfully. This line's all stretched out. And those lines are just tore right out. Daryl's in the backyard. I don't even really want to talk to him right now. mulch looks good my wife's gonna be happy about that well I was so frustrated I just walked in the house with my work boots and if my wife comes home without me cleaning this up it's gonna be a really bad day and I can tell you I will be lonely this is all Daryl's fault Come oh, on. I thought it was all weed left. I heard saying, oh yeah, it's all weed left. Are you just gonna come up and ignore the fact that you tore down all the lines and not even talk about it? Oh, come on. I know you called accident. me, you were laughing like. No, I was not, no, I was not. <laughs> Eric. It's oh, not, it's not funny, dude. It was an You're like, huh, oh, what are we gonna do with these wires? It's three wires, it's kind of on the table and Oh, I got the number well, I know you money. just get to go home and enjoy your evening, and everything's fine. And I got to worry about these wires and how much it's going to cost. That's the problem. I'll have all that figured out for you. Let's go. I should knock your teeth out again. <laughs> you I, I really should. That's he not said, good, man. He said that right he after dropping the salter all over the yard, needed, flipping it around to to back him up. Just drop it and then move. I did drop it, but it went up. It was well, fine. It's man, you've been driving dump truck like. For oh, decades. Yeah. Like a whole decade. And he hey, it's, it, if it was a big, like, big deal, it's not. It's, it's uh, like trust he stopped me, for the wall. <laughs> wires before. No, I'm no, sure you have done them before. I have. Uh, yeah, I know. I went down the whole alley one day and they gave me connected them. You're right, you want to With the 40 yard You know what? I, I don't even want to know the past. Okay. okay. All right, so everybody just left. I know for sure my neighbors are going to be really mad. I think this supplies internet to a bunch of people on this side of the street. My internet's on, but all these people, nope. They are not gonna be happy, I can tell you that right now. Apparently it's, it's uh, AT&T, which is our telephone, they also do internet, and it's Spectrum, which just does internet. And I don't know what the third wire is. All right, I'm back at the yard. The guys are all gone, so that eliminates any more trouble with employees. Anyways, I'm glad the day's over. All right, I'm taking the Crown Victoria for the weekend. Me and Donald are gonna cruise. Yes. Good morning. So yesterday you saw us wash that colored and stamped patio. Today we're gonna go ahead back to the job and seal it. I just wanna show you a few things that you're gonna need to complete the job. First of all, you're gonna need a sealer can. Uh, this is a Chapin 1949. So this is capable of handling harsh chemicals. So the sealer that we use is a solvent-based sealer and you can't just use like a plastic garden sprayer. You have to have a heavy duty uh, chemical resistant sprayer. The next thing you're gonna need is a roller. This is a simple nine inch paint roller um, with a kind of a medium nap roller head and then a handle. And then you're going to need a small paint brush for the detail areas. So I use disposable cheap brushes from Home Depot. Once I'm done, I just toss them in the garbage. Uh, if you're a homeowner that's maybe doing it one time, you could use one of your good brushes and clean it. Uh, but honestly, it's, it's just easier and faster if you pick up a disposable, toss it in the trash when you're done. Uh, this is an important uh, factor in sealing the concrete to make sure that stamped concrete is not slippery. This is called H&C Shark Grip, and this adds traction to the sealer. 
Stamped concrete, when you seal it, if you do not add this, it will be slippery. Over the years, stamped concrete has developed an awful reputation for being slippery, and people will actually shy away from it because guys uh, neglect using a traction additive like this here Shark Grip. Now the sealer itself, uh, today I'm using Super Diamond Clear by Euclid Chemical. You've also seen me in the past use uh, a chemical called CS309 by WR Meadows. They're very similar in their results. And then I also have a little cup filled with xylene. I have about 16 ounces of xylene in here. This is a solvent based sealer and what I like to do is I like to thin it just a little bit so I put about two cups of xylene in the mix. This is a three gallon can. I have it almost filled to the top so I'll go ahead and dump that right in there. And then the shark grip as far as how much you use the manufacturer tells you that this is enough shark grip for five gallons of sealer. I do not use that. That's way too much shark grip in my opinion. I will use less than half between one third and one half of this container for a full sealer can, which again is three gallons. So um, you don't want to overdo it because what happens is it'll actually show up on the surface of dark uh, stamped concrete and it'll clog the tip of your sealer can. So, all right, I think that's all I need to tell you for now. I'm gonna load this stuff up and we'll go to the job. All right, we're back at the patio here that we washed yesterday. Now the surface is perfectly clean, it's perfectly dry and it's ready for sealer. The first thing I'm going to use is the disposable paintbrush and I'll go around all the edges by the house and cut it in just like you would paint before I start spraying the surface and rolling it. All right, so I got the sealer right up to the edge, being careful not to get any on the house, of course. And now I'm going to go ahead and start using the pump sprayer and misting on the surface nice and light. And then I'll back roll it and we're going to do two coats. Alright, so as we're going along, we are back rolling everything and making sure we get 100% coverage. We're also making sure that we put the sealer on thin. Two light coats, never put thick coats of sealer on. You'll have problems with it later, trust me. Alright, I got all the rest of the edges cut in with that paintbrush, but I saw something interesting that I'll show you. So I've talked about these control joints before. And this is a saw cut control joint. It's a saw cut that we put in purposefully to give the concrete a place to crack where you won't see the crack on the surface of the concrete. Control joints and stamped concrete can be optional, um, but this one I decided to go ahead and put them in because uh, the nature of these corners sticking out, I knew it was gonna crack off these corners and it being a new construction, there was a better chance that it was gonna crack. But as I was cutting these edges and I saw something interesting that I'll show you. So we went ahead and put this in the day after we poured and it's about a week later. And I really hope you can see this. I'll try to get real close. But coming off that control joint, you can see that concrete cracked already. I hope you can see that right around there. So that's the purpose of control joints. That's why we put them in and that one did its job. All right, the first coat is done. Now I'm gonna give it some time. I'm gonna let it set up to the point where I can walk on this without it sticking to my boots. Then I know it's ready for the second coat. In this situation, with it being a little bit cool out, it's probably gonna be about 30 minutes. All right, guys, this is ready for a second coat. As you can see, the sealer is not sticking to my boots at all. That's how I know it's ready for the second coat. So it's the exact same process as the first coat. Once we get the second coat on, we are done. All right, this patio is 100%. It's going to dry a little bit lighter than it looks now. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. It's Saturday, it's about lunchtime. I'm gonna grab some lunch and then I have a ton of stuff to do, including making a diet video for my second channel. Yes, I'm doing very good on the diet. I'm losing pounds uh, every week, which is going really well. I have to edit two videos by Monday and I have to meet with two customers. So it's gonna be crazy. That's just the way it is as a concrete contractor in the spring. I've gotten used to it and I love it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.